Good afternoon, everyone. Our presider this afternoon is our pastor, Father Fernando Molina Restrepo, assisted by Deacon Paul. Please rise and join us in singing as we begin our celebration. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good to see you all. As, okay, thank you. <laughs> As we begin this celebration, we do so with a humble heart. So we ask the Lord to, in His mercy, forgive our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christe eleison. Us, you feed us with your body and blood. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds some, himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another between rams and goats. The word of the Lord.
From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. First, Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will say to him and answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? 
When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen. I say to you, whatever you did for the one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. And then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? And he will answer them, Amen. I say to you, what you did not do for the one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Celebrating the solemnity of Christ the King is an opportunity for us to step back from the virus, the social restrictions, the political arguments, and all the other secular worries filling our days. Today, more than ever, we must remind ourselves that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is king. But he is not just any king. He is our king. Jesus is why we can still be joyful and thankful during these unprecedented times. As the first reading tells us, our king is benevolent. He loves us and cares for us as our shepherd cares for his sheep. When we feel scattered, Jesus is with us. When we feel lost and alone, he will find us. And when we are tired, he will give us comfort and rest. We cannot let our troubles and challenges blind us to his love. Our earthly sufferings last only a moment when compared to eternity in heaven. Jesus is our hope and our strength. Reach out to him more and more in active prayer and you will see how blessed we are to follow Jesus as the king of our lives. The gospel reading reveals another side to our king. He is ever present and with us each step of the way on our faith journeys. This is another reason to rejoice. Some people may scoff at the idea. They may say, where is Jesus? I don't see him. As Christians, we are privileged to know that Jesus is in everyone we meet. Jesus is in everyone we meet. I don't think 
There are too many followers of other kings that can perform a kindness for their king every day of their lives. Christians can because we find Jesus every day in the people that we meet. When we bring food to the St. Vincent de Paul pantry, we are bringing food to our king. When we stand against injustices, we are standing up for our king. When we show respect to others by social distancing and wearing masks, we are showing respect to our king. Let's use today the feast of Christ the King as a reminder that we have the opportunity to interact with our God and King every day. We must look beyond external differences because Christ lives in all of us. The feast of Christ the King is also a great way to prepare ourselves for the tenth given holiday on Thursday. Many people are complaining about how difficult Thanksgiving will be this year. They don't like the changes. They don't want to limit their traditions. But the holiday is not really about a fancy turkey dinner or football games or visiting with Uncle Charlie and Aunt Jenny. It is about gratitude. Even in our darkest days, there is always some, something to be thankful for. It may be as small as a dewdrop on a blade of grass, but it is there. Our God and King has blessed us abundantly. It is time to look beyond what we are giving up and appreciate what has been with us all along. I am thankful for all of you, each member of my Transfiguration family. You have shown me so much love and support through my recent bout with cancer. I am thankful that the closing of the church earlier this year didn't dampen your love for the Mass and the reasons we gather. I am thankful for those of you willing to face your fears of technology in order to view mass or attend classes online. I am thankful for my hardworking, dedicated staff. They have made it possible to keep the liturgical, sacramental, educational, and business size of the church operating. I am thankful for our deacons and my brother priest. We are all challenged by this pandemic. I appreciate their counsel, suggestions, and assistance. I am thankful for our devoted volunteers. This applies to those of you forced to stay away when you would rather be here, and those of you who have come forward to assist as new needs arise. I am thankful for your generosity, even at a time when many people have lost their jobs and must tighten their budgets. The Transfiguration family comes together to help the church and those in need. 
As a quick reminder, the deadline for our virtual giving tree purchases is December 6. Please see the banner in the foyer or our website. The Transfiguration family has faced many challenges and we are going to be fine because we know, we know that our King is here with us. And for that, I am the most thankful of all. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us confidently bring our concerns before the throne of God, who is just. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we might remember that our vocation is one of service and not to be served, we pray to the Lord. For our archdiocese, especially our Cathedral Parish of Christ the King on their feast day. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish community, give us a renewed sense of commitment to one another as family and bless parishioners who are in need today. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the homeless and hungry, Keep us mindful of our Christian duty to care for those who are cold and hungry and not fortunate enough to have loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our country, may we be a people of faith dedicated to caring for those in need here and abroad rather than dwelling on political differences. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, strengthen those who are ill, grant them healing, and bless and sustain their loved ones and caregivers. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Ben and Dorothy Gwarek, from whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died and those who mourn, especially Robert Burns, Margaret Clara Quartemont, Bob Doherty, John B. Diardi, Silas Santos, Kay Jordan, and David Lewis Sr. 
Grant the joy of your presence to all who have died, and help us comfort those who mourn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions you hold in the silence of your hearts. Almighty and ever-living God, help us to see the face of Christ in all who are in need, so that we might care for them as we will care for Jesus. Grant these prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty 
an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for to your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously made holy these gifts we had brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John Harmeyer, our Archbishop, Bernard and Joel, our auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you had gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you had summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace at an appropriate distance. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. If you are viewing this Mass online, please pray this prayer for when one cannot receive communion. My Jesus, on the day of my baptism, you poured your love into my heart through the Holy Spirit who unites me eternally to you. Through that same Spirit, I pledge my love and adore you, present in your most holy body and blood. Though I cannot consume you in this sacred banquet, let me be consumed by your complete desire for me so that my longing for you may be filled by your love alone and your mercy overflow through me into this world so in need. Amen. Darling of the 
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. It's going to be different, but it's going to be Thanksgiving, okay? Thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, he reigns from heaven above.